Oi, oi. <clears throat> we are back. I think it's maybe three weeks without us doing one. And the last video that I did said we'd be back every week. So apologies yeah. in advance. I mean, not in advance, in retrospect. But we are back. Aintree is around the corner. We're going to be ranting for a little bit. We have just been ranting before we came on. And I'm just excited about that. We're going to be talking you through some of our best bets for the Grand National. Any other business that comes in. We're not doing any questions from the crowd because we're not recording it live. But if you drop some comments or questions in the some comments in the questions, some questions in the comments. We will be back next week. We'll do an entry review and we'll start looking forward to some other bits and pieces. We'll try to keep it regular, but we'll answer some questions and stuff that are in there. So feel free to drop stuff in there. Dazzler, something yes. when you first came onto Zoom, which the people will be thinking the same of as well, where did you get your Godolphin branded microphone? Microphone? It looks like, doesn't it? Because the Godolphin hat that's on your doorstep, from, from here, it looks like it's a blue microphone sat up the top. Does it? <laughs> it looks well good. It's quite cool, wasn't it? It's all... a little test in testing. But yeah, how are you yeah. doing? You good? Yeah, yeah, not too bad, mate. Yourself? I'm all right. It's been like a busy, busy time anyway. It's the lull after shout in a minute. The fact that we've had the yeah. four-week breaks dragged it out more than it usually would have done. So as much as it's good from like a maybe punting and form perspective, been semi-annoying. But we are back. I've been looking at Aintree. Like Christ Almighty, you know we we both oh, we don't like to poo poo. We do poo poo. We say it's their grade twos, didn't we? That bowl tomorrow is unreal, isn't it? Well, potentially yeah. unreal. Very, very, very good. I like I, I I quite like a Plutard's chance. Don't don't ruin it. It's clickbait. We've got to keep the retention up, right? Daryl doesn't oh. know what he fans in the race. Make sure you stay tuned to find out. No, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm also going to try and do something with the ads, guys, because I know when I went live and I put ads in there, there was bundles of them. And when I went live and I didn't put ads in there, YouTube just started shafting me. From I got no re revenue, but you guys have <laughs> watched those videos. Yeah, so yeah. we're recording. I'm going to schedule them in. Um, and I'm probably going to announce them as well. So when we go from one section to the other. Speaking of which, here's a message from our sponsors. <laughs> I'm joking. I'll let that one slide. Right. But we'll do, we'll do some sort of ranting. We were talking about little Twitter sphere, weren't we? And... I know it's bad, but how, like, I don't know, some people just go through situations and then people are starting to get, like, picked on and the trolls and stuff get enforced, and mm -hmm. they? And bits and pieces like that are coming. How are you finding things this season with, like, your punt in Cheltenham was obviously... Cheltenham was, like, monster, if you had a thought. But oh, you're yeah. quite... not. I don't want to say that complacent of it, but... And you're not, like, you're definitely not, like, smug or anything like that of it. But, like, even when we had, like, the Monkfish year that was, like, the kickstart for you doing this stuff and the times before, like, you know, didn't you, you're going to make money at Cheltenham. But did you yeah. expect it to be as good as it was? Uh, no, uh, go on. Yeah, Save yeah, it. I did. Yeah, I did expect it to be as good as it was. When you put like that many months of work into it, if you like, if it if it's not, you're you're going to be extremely disappointed. But um, you just mentioned there the lull after Cheltenham, like that's really difficult because like I, I I the way I do it, the way I've always done it is I bet a certain stake every day, and then when it comes to Cheltenham, that stake goes right up because three months worth of work has gone into it, you know, and I like to think that at Cheltenham is a lot more reliable. Um, so I bet a lot bigger at Cheltenham. Um, and then after Cheltenham, you come back down, um, you know, you bring your stakes back down to your normal thingies. That's not the difficult part of it. It's the racing I find immediately after Cheltenham is, is the difficult part of it. Even though it's the same as it was before Cheltenham, that it, it's, it's very difficult to kind of have that same enthusiasm immediately after Cheltenham about, I don't know, like a class three at Ludlow or something like that. It's, you know what I mean? It, it is. And and when you sort of feel like you found one at, on a Tuesday at Exeter over her, in a novice hurdle, and then they go and run a bag of shite, you kind of think, well, he's obviously looking for a handicap mark or something. Like, do you know what I mean? And you're also, yeah. you're back to that sort of, it's almost like uh, during the day-to-day -day stuff, you almost have to try and predict what the trainer is is looking for with this horse. Um, yeah. So, look, Paul Nichols is a great example. He he would pick targets for his horses, and that's that's you know that's where they'll go um, during the sort of the week. And that they tend to win races because they're just from the Paul Nichols yard, and they're racing against a lot of rubbish most of the time, really. And just to try and decipher all of that again after knowing at Cheltenham every horse is there to 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 give everything. You know what I mean? It's the be all and end all. That's when I like betting. That that's when I like having a good punt. When even like Aintree, you know that you've you've got sort of the, the Cheltenham factor at Aintree where they could bounce and you don't know how you know quick they can be turned around in four weeks this year, etc. But that's when I like to have a good bet. It does get very frustrating for me, I've got to be honest, 
um, sort of during the week a little bit. Um, but yeah, it's just that crash back down, mate. Uh, other than that, it's all right. You just, I suppose you just got to get through it, haven't you? Sort of less is more, I think. I, I think that's one of the things I've learned. Less is definitely more. Yeah, and it comes to like a price perspective, I find as well, because you know I'm always about the value, trying to like put things in there, and I'm greedy as I like, especially of like the stuff that's non Cheltenham. If you've got something that I think is like a six to four poke, I want maybe five to two on it, and I know there's a chance I'm probably not going to get that. But with the week to the weekday stuff, you are right. Like you don't even know if half of them are trying. And then when they go and like get beat, and it ends up being like a pocket talk thing, you people saying, "Oh, they've given that a terrible ride," or they never put it in the race, things like that. It's the it's the bit that when that happens after and people's reaction to the fact is, oh my god, they weren't trying, to the point that you think, well, before the race happened, it is a it's the third run in a novice handicap, which is the fourth race before they're gonna get a handicap mark. They thought the horse was good and all that sort of like you could you potentially could see the reason why they're not gonna try. Yeah. So yeah, you have you have to sort of factor that stuff in, but it is like a proper shift. That's why with anything, that's why I am shout mental it's when you get to the top tier of anything and you know everyone's trying it's, it's you don't have to question where yeah. you just, just look at the form and you get it wrong as much as you might get it right but you don't mind because you've you've done what you've you've, you know, you've made a bet or you've had you've done something based on like good intentions that they're trying their best yeah and people are right though to call out these poor rides during the week though because there are mm-hmm. loads of them there are honestly there are loads of them i've seen loads of them thinking Jesus Christ, how has he sort of got a ride? Do you know what I mean? Like sometimes be that all of those factors that you have to consider during the week are out are taken out of the equation almost to the point at a meeting like Cheltenham or a meeting like Aintry or you know, Fairy House or whatever, punch down. Um so yeah, it's it's it I think just day to day racing brings back all the other factors that you can do without worrying about. Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah, but it's good because the whole like, we still like to look at the racing. We still like to get in. I've had a few bets yeah. in the last couple of weeks with stuff, and it is like you can't you can't have Cheltenham every single day because then it's not no longer Cheltenham, is it? Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. So we yeah. love it. Good thing with Aintree, right? Is so again, we sometimes poo poo. I poo poo a little bit. What's your like like knee jerk reaction to when you think of like Aintree? Do right. you think that it's like obviously there are some that are targets, but when you mentioned like Cheltenham horses where they were going to run at Cheltenham, whether they didn't or didn't run because they were non-runners to the ground or whatever it is. I know there's one you like because of that. Or they ran there and maybe didn't perform and then they come to Aintree or they ran really well at Cheltenham and then they come to Aintree. Do you do like do you think Cheltenham's the be-all and end-all and Aintree's an afterthought? Or do Absolutely. you think, okay, good. And or, or do you think that sometimes like where, like if a horse skips Cheltenham to go to Aintree, that gives, like, in, like it enhances their chance. I think, Because yeah. I would... I, I I do I I see I always look at it as a potential. I look at it as like a negative. If <coughs> Cheltenham was a target and then they bottled it, makes me feel like they really can't fancy the horse as much as they do. But that is, it's just that like a perception thing. It I I am really, really excited about Aintree this year though. We'll get we'll get on to some bet stuff, I reckon. You happy with that? Yeah. I I, I tend with Aintree, I tend to sort of stick with the horses that have disappointed me at Cheltenham a lot of the time. And it does tend to actually sort of pay off but like, like you said that in terms of horses that quickly uh skip out and fought entry um i think if they're with the right trainer and and they've been you know i think it's different so i'm look i'm talking at the likes of like i don't fancy him at all but like pick dory for instance of paul nichols paul knows that he's probably going to be able to take advantage of a good opportunity with some tired horses yeah. in that race do you get what i mean like or a oh, joseph yeah. o'brien with bambridge i know he's pulled out because of the ground but you know that could have been a blessing in disguise sort of thing so i think there are exceptions to the to the rule but yeah i i i, I see what you're saying about if, if they've not necessarily if they haven't if they've not been entered and said no we're going to skip it and go to entry they might feel that it's too competitive race but that also counteracts your point by saying that this is not entry is never as competitive as Cheltenham is it like no, exactly call, it's the grade two meeting isn't it we yeah like, and there's it, nothing right? wrong with it either there's, there's plenty of horses that do underwhelm with Cheltenham that then go and do well here and there's plenty of horses that run well at Cheltenham run here like there's no like hard and fast rule with it I I do just feel like if like I don't know like if you had something that's the bollocks this is like the good example I think is fun fun fun. Everyone was saying, won't run at Cheltenham, it'll skip for the mayor's race, so Patrick can ride it. Not, not going to run at Aintree, is it? Who want, I, I don't want to be rude because I love the meeting, but who <laughs> wants to win a grade two bumper at Aintree? You'd rather get beaten out of sight at Cheltenham and come back yeah. next year and try and win something. Agree, agree. And it, as many races, like, like it, it doesn't matter, I'm winter at something else. So I'm going to chuck in a little advert break and then we're going to start talking about some of our bets from this week, but then we're going to chuck ourselves into Aintree bets. So three, two, one. <laughs> 
Imagine that's working. I think it will do. I can time it in there. A lot that more work back. for me. Anywho, a couple of bets I've been having recently. I've been looking at like trades and stuff. I've been doing a, a couple of good bits on the dogs recently as well. But there's been a few races, right, where things like like Shantou Flyer yesterday and what was the oh, there was another one yesterday. Really good segment this is when I can't remember what it's called. But anyway, Shantou Flyer was one. I need I should get my phone up and look what the thing was, but where Shantou was Flyer was Subble. Uh, no. uh, was it Cockley Cot? Did that run yesterday? Uh Pontifract. Yeah, in the flat, didn't it? Two mile two or something. Yeah, well beaten Champagne, though, wasn't it? Champagne, yeah, Champagne City one, didn't it? Oh, yeah, Champagne City one, yeah. So, basically, the long and the short of it is the reason I brought them up is Shantou Flyer. I love this horse, full stop, anyway. He is a bit of a Cheltenham horse, but he was, he was just much better than what he was running against yesterday. But, like, the bookies overnight were like four to five ish, and the exchanges, there's not much liquidity, but they were laying like five to four the night before on it. And I was thinking this is going to drift out a bit. And it did. And there was non-runners and all that sort of stuff. But again, I don't want to be like rude, but I feel like certain races like that, when you do have like a half decent horse, I don't think the market really knows what they're doing. The market will know what they can do in terms of like trading or stuff like that. But it ends up rather than it being like a betting medium, you get some stupid prices there. So Shanty Fly did go and win. It was a stupid price. It traded real short, like, uh, like fairly early in the race anyway. Just, just looked like an easy opportunity and it paid off. The Cockley Cot race, I backed Cocklicott because I thought, like, distance, because definitely the trip have been good, was comfortable the last time out. Sometimes you get those types of horses. I don't think that's the name of the horse, though. It's something like that, isn't it? Say again, do again. Cocklicott. <laughs> it's definitely not Cocklicott. It is Cocklicott, isn't it? Love the cock. Cocklito. Cocklito, yeah, probably that. But Champagne City is when I looked further down because I like those. I backed it at Cheltenham a few times on like, hard ground, backed him in like, the place market, each way marks up at that. And I was looking and just thinking, He's a fucking stupid price, considering he is the pace angle. Betfest said it on their thing in there. And when you get pace angle horses, those sort of things, like he was like 36, I think he went off his Betfair SP. The price is only going to decline. You can have 50 quid or that or 10 or whatever you want. And you can mm. probably lay it 10 points shorter in running. And he could go and get beat, but you could have like a little bit of a free roll. Anywho, I backed Cockley Cot. He then started to, oh, she then started to drift a little bit. I, I traded out of it because I started to feel uncomfortable. I was like, actually, you know what? I, I don't think this was the bet. I wasn't at the wrong price. Laid it a little bit. Then money started to come in again a little bit, and I was like, oh, do you know, I, like it probably will go and win. So I just fanned it about a bit, which is, I was just a bit stupid. I was a borderline looking for bets, waiting for that Shanty Fly race. And I didn't have any money on Champagne um, City that won the race, but the race went off. Cockley Cop was sat all right. The commentator's giving it all the, oh, yeah, and, and Andrea Rizzini sat there really comfortable on the favourite. And I was looking at it thinking, I don't really think it is. So I think I ended <laughs> up having 120 quid on it to win just before the race. Never went like that short, but as it turned in, I could you could see it at Zini's arms going a little bit. And then because it's flat racing, but we've got a couple of like jumps horses in there. I like you, I like that Champagne City, the way that he was traveling then, he was never stopping out in front. And as much as that Cockley Cop might be able to pick some stuff up, it what like it wasn't, didn't look that comfortable. But again, the in running stuff, even though there's like a five second delay, I laid out of it. And then probably for like a good 10 seconds after, he's riding the horse, he's like on the wide outside, he's not making any inroads. And it was still shorter than it was like off Betfair SP. So I managed to get out of it. I was fuming that I didn't get the win off of Champagne City. But where we have this lull in between Cheltenham and Aintree and you get like the dross racing, mm. there's definitely some good opportunities on the trading side of things that people are just, people are just, they're just looking at the waves of the market rather than watching the actual race, I think. Yeah, it's, it's, di <clears throat> it's difficult. Like the flats mixing in with some of the jump, like you're talking about jump horses in a flat race there. And then you're, We'd, we've got flat racing at Musselboro at Doncaster and jumps racing at Exeter. It's just it's just all a bit of a mess at the moment. I wish there was kind of a clean break, don't you, between mm. the jump season and the flat season so that you could switch off and completely switch over. I'm finding myself at the moment looking at the flat flat racing, then flicking back to the jumps racing, and I just, I don't know, I'm, I'm in a bit of a lull myself. But I can see what you're saying. There is definitely money to be made, but that's not I, I i haven't even got time i don't think to, to, no, do, to but, do that. But, but, but that's the thing I, like with those ones there like i would typically i'd look at i'd look at some meetings because i fancy looking at some of the horses in there i'd but not try and find a bet but i'd look at something and be like oh this i reckon this has got a chance price up in my mind if it's a bettable price i'd then look at oh i can bat this and trade it wherever it was those ones i literally just went on betfair to see what the market prices were up for thursday at aintree just looked skimmed for a few of the races and i was like i'm pretty sure i could predict what's going to happen in the market in these ones so that was good fun. So I made a couple of quid this week. I very much almost lost a bundle of money on Cockley Cop, but 
thanks to all the flat boys for thinking that that horse being ridden was a good positive sign. So we'll get on to the entry bets. So I chuck another ad in? No, I won't. We'll talk about the entry bets, right? Because hey, the entry is definitely decent. We'll try and go fairly quick with it because we can go around the house. We're going to chuck in some best bets for people out there. I'm also going to do my same bet video that I did for Cheltenham where I put all my bets up for every single day. So, I mean, no one's Ooh. far in the video anyway. But if you are, go check that out. Um, because I'll be telling you how much money I've had on Saint Noir in the opener. The manifesto novice chase, mate, looks like does look fairly tasty. I feel like it's a race almost every year looks right. Was picked in it last year in Miller's Bank one, and then it was just crap on it. I thought Miller's Bank only had one ear after that race last year. I'm not sure if it does or not, but anywho, it's a race that I've just I just remember over the years. Then did Klashnikov win it? Or did uh, Klashnikov didn't win? Yes, it? 2019, yeah. Yeah, so it's stuff like that. It's the, it's the, 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 I feel like this is the type of race where you get beginning of the season horses that you think, oh, they could be all right. Then they go to Cheltenham and then you actually realise, well, you're not really Cheltenham calibre. Then they come to Aintree and you think, I knew that was a fucking good horse. So yeah, that's why like, even, like, even like Miller's Bank and stuff, like not a terrible horse, but in the grand scheme of Cheltenham, no chance. When it comes to an Aintree thing, you're like, that wasn't out of the realms of possibility. So Stage Star's gone and got it done at Cheltenham, right? Stage Star, I, like tactically, I think, went and got it done. I do, I do like Stage Star. We talked about this once a couple of times. Like chasing debut was real good, wasn't it? Yeah, it probably was, does yeah. deserve to be favourite, but like it, that's no, no way is it anywhere near a bear. I know you like Banbridge. I don't know what price you put him up at or you backed him out, but I can see it. I, I hated what he did at Aintree last year. And I know you can like forgive a horse anything, but I remember when Brave Man's game got beat by a horse senior as a novice. Then they come here and they blame it on stomach ulcers. Like they, it does start to re like repeat on me. But again, I think he's short enough. Sant was the horse that I, I I just think he's a bit of a bet. You saw it with like Gentleman to me and like Willie Mullins will send not very many horses to Aintree, but the ones that he is sending to Aintree, I think he like, I think he thinks he got a chance. And I've I've always thought Sant was the type of horse that would appreciate step up and trip. They started him off over two mile freezing hurdles when he got beat one to three before he went and won the county. And that Christmassy run where he ran in against Hollow Games and and things like that. I think that was a race, the way that it looked like it was run, because he was right off the back and then came through, I think it just looked like it was the stayers race that went and won it. And I know Hollow Games was like a well-beaten, I don't think it was favourite, but it was well-beaten like fourth in the back and people say that he stays, but he doesn't want it. Hollow Games, I think, was like a two-miler-ish. So I think saint War is on an all right price at like 72, four to one. I much prefer Willie Munnin's training horses than Joseph O'Brien and Paul Nichols. So it's probably because it's the first race at Aintree. And I've got a bit of an opinion on Saint Wow, and I think he's. I think I just always thought he wanted to step up and trip. So, like when Klashnikov went and won it, always thought he was like a middle distancey horse. I think Saint Wow has a bit of a squeak, but you disagree. Also, just on that, I'd say Visionarian. That's going to get nibbled, I think, because that was not far behind Saint Wow. That appreciate the step up, but won't beat Saint Wow. Anywho, you like Bambridge, didn't you? Yeah, I, I don't. I, I like obviously Sam. Well, I think obviously it, I want to take Stage Star on because I know he's dictated um, his last two wins, including at Cheltenham, when there were some really poor rides in behind that he just got an absolute freebie on the front end. And uh, you reckon he'll get one here though? Yeah, I think he might get one here, but I think they might push the likes of Straw Fan Jack on, or I think Visionarium uh, Visionarium might just go a bit for. I don't know if it'll be as easy a lead, despite the fact that it's a small field. And I think the market is taking into account that they think also that he could get a soft lead again. But he did bomb out after Cheltenham last year, didn't he, at this meeting? Um, I'm not entirely sure he's one that takes his races in as as well as others can do. Uh, so, so I do I do want to be against him. I'm not I'm not like massively saying he can't win the race or nothing, but I just I did did want to be against him. Um, I wanted to be against him the last twice, to be fair. Uh, but yeah, Banbridge. Um, I think being pulled out of Cheltenham, coming here by desire, uh, coming here is a is a blessing in disguise. Really, he's got a great record on the back of a look a, a decent break, sixty eight days. I'd forgive the run last year in, in the in the Grade One hurdle on this car because I thought he had a hard race at Cheltenham to to beat Cobbler's Dream there. Um, and that was obviously only a three week turnaround. This is I know he went to Cheltenham was pulled out, but this is still four weeks. He hasn't run. Um, I'm hoping the ground will still be on the decent side. A lot of people keep talking about all this rain coming, but they only had, they only had 1.4 mil last night. It's still good in places. I don't think it's going to be a slog. And actually, you know, hasn't been you know hasn't been touched for a long time, has it? So 
I think um, I think he's got a big chance. I think this is optimum distance, two mile four, as he showed at Leopardstown, running on strongly at the finish, maybe picking up the pieces there, but he definitely wants two and a half miles. I know he's run to 160. I don't think anything else has run to 160 in this field, in my opinion. Um, so I just think every, he ticks a lot of boxes, the, the, the ground, fingers crossed, uh, the trip um, off the back of a break, young horse fresh, done the time figures. Like there's a lot, I think there's a lot in his favor. I I thought he should be favorite, uh, considering mm. he would have been, you know, vying for favoritism in the turners for with Mighty Potter, and he hasn't run. Stage star subsequently gone and won that race, albeit tactically and, and dictated. And now that makes stage star a, a short price. I don't know, I'm not I'm not entirely convinced. So Banbridge, hopefully, yeah, gets off to a good start. Be my opinion. I think Sam Rob will follow him home. It, I think just I'll just say it. I don't. I'm not convinced Sam Rob wants two and a half miles, but you are. But if it is steadily run and it is dictated, he's the one with a sharper turn of foot, in my opinion. So he could do get. You know a... re... Do you know what I reckon they're going to do with him? Sam Rob, go off the front because they hold him up over two miles because he can't go the gallop. Whereas in this, they're going to send him on because he's chased debut. They ran him over two mile one, didn't they? And they sent him on. And yeah, I, that's I, a fair I, point. Good do. I, I reckon, like potentially from a tactical thing, they're going to do it. And and like there, when it comes to Cheltenham, like you, I, I don't, I know Stage Star went and did it, but Cheltenham is so much more competitive where people will just leave everything out the line. I feel like I, yeah. I, I feel like I might change it tactically with him there. Banbridge so. is good to be fair because, like you say, that if he hadn't run at Cheltenham, well, if he had, like, if he had have run at Cheltenham, given the fact that the result went the way the result did. It's not beyond the realms of possibility that he would have even won that race, even on like bad ground. When you did one of your racing things with um, Kevin Blake and you asked about it, you were talking about what you wanted, like what he wanted to see from the Dublin Race Festival about where he was going to finish and everything. Did exactly what he said there, didn't he? In terms yeah. of like staying on, never near if that's what he wants for trip. And he did. You when you were saying about is like the ground going to be the influence? He didn't really seem like ground was going to be the influence, which made me feel like as much as we know that he doesn't want it soft. It made me feel like he was saying, yeah, ground's not what we're thinking about when it comes to Cheltenham. We just don't want to run against the top boys in the Arkle or the top boys in the Turners. So even like that, I know they were driven because of ground, but when Mighty Potter appreciate have lined up in the Turners, they probably just thought, we yeah, ain't it probably didn't. It made the decision easier to pull him out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah of course. Yeah. And and as we're saying, as we've said, this is more like a grade two than a grade one, isn't it? So Definitely. So, yeah, I, I, I would say, I mean, I, I, I don't think the market's got it too far on to be honest with you. I don't think there's much juice in something like a Samwise, but I'm just thinking that you do get a few weirdy results. I've always thought he wanted to yeah. turn on the drink. So I'm kicking off with Samwise, the juvenile. This will take two seconds to talk about, won't it? Yeah. Zen. Zen. Shit zone. Yeah, shit zone. Miles clear of these in receipt of the weight allowance. Miles. Do you remember do you remember when Apple's Jays won here after running one at Cheltenham and literally won by like half the track? Yeah, that's kind of she's got that potential. The massive step forward she took, I think, from Fairy House. I mean, she looked good at the finish at Fairy House, but the biggest that was the huge step forward from Fairy House to Cheltenham. Massive. She would take a world of beating here. Like the uh, and, and this is the this is sort of the frustrating part about being a tipster as well, is that I genuinely think she'd take a world of beating, right? But I think she's priced right. In in terms mm. of because she's a juvenile and Obviously, the big step forward last time, the, the dramatic difference between Fairy House and Cheltenham, and then what potentially could go, it could also go the other way from Cheltenham to Aintree with a quick with a quick enough turnaround sort of thing. And, and you know, the, the third run. And I, I don't know, as a, as a juvenile, I'm just very, very cautious about taking short prices about juveniles. Yeah, yes. I mean. So, yeah. well, I'll, that's the thing. I'll put, I will put it in my all Babettes thing about stake and stuff, but I've had, she, she'd be like, well, I've had 30 quid on Saint Moir, I've had 60 quid on Zenta, and I've had 50 quid on another one later, which I've got top up to 60. So she'd be like, I'd say like a, a point or like a couple of point type bet. There is one for Friday that I'm going to have a couple of hundred quid on. So Ooh, we'll come and we'll get there. Friday type races. But like this is one, like it's almost like it gets stuck in, but you are right. It's one of those that she could win by 20 lengths and you think, Jesus, how have I not ploughed into that? But at yeah. the same time, she could bomb. Not necessarily like bomb, but like Bo Zenith could be better than he is. Not out of the realms of possibility that he's like, seven pounds better than what he's run to Nusret, i don't think is that great but like could has got scope they're all juveniles they could do stuff script writer must be better than what he did the last day i know paddy brennan's off but he's got a fergal horse in there i wouldn't see it a negative that harry cobham's riding a horse and then that gray vow again got some sweat bits to final figures but i went back and watched that huntington race a couple of times 
that's that was, that was very much just like you know when you see it like a, I don't know like an exercise like race in Ireland or whatever and you just think they just go there running against loads of, like Ross. She she probably was running against them, but horses like I don't know some horses that just leave like a good impression. If they then go and win a race like this, you, you're like oh, actually I should have taken, paid more attention to what they did before. Like a Hoy Senor when he won the novices race. Mm. After he goes and wins the novices race, you look back after and think oh, I probably should have given him a bit more respect. But I do think she shits home. Yeah, I do. Right. Speaking of a hoist in your the oh, bowl. Bowl, oh, bowl, right? I know you love or well, I know the one you bet in it and I I can see it. But how many times have you like gone back and forth in your mind through the horses, or have you did you just decide this is the one that I like, I'm gonna stop thinking about it? No, I thought this was quite easy. <laughs> yeah, no, honestly, I did I know it's crazy. I I didn't think that was gonna be the case last week when I sort of, sort of see the decorations, I wanted to be immediately against Brave Man's game. Absolutely immediately. Bombed out in this race last year. He bombed out in the manifesto last year at this meeting. He bombed out the year before beaten by a hoist and you didn't quite give his run in. The Gold Cup was his ultimate target, right? Mm-hmm. He was absolutely ready to the nines for that. Then he wasn't even going to come in here but Clanders Oboe was retired the other week. So Paul Nichols did a thing and said that uh, Brain Man's game is going to step in for, for Clanders Oboe. I just I'm just steering clear of him. I think he's good. I think he could bounce. I think he likes time between his races. Um great horse, but I do think he had a very hard race in the Gold Cup. So I thought it was a grueling Gold Cup as well this year. Proper end to end gallop, proper time figure, like I think he's going to take some getting over. Shishkin, I was obviously, normally what I would do is I would, as I said earlier, I would stick with the horses that sort of disappointed me a little bit at Cheltenham and hopefully they back up here. But Shishkin's a bit different. Um, I kind of, I, I feel there might be a slight issue with him still. Um, it, he's very genuine. He gave all of his running, but he, he was reluctant to start in the Ryanair. I don't know if you saw it, but he they set off and he was a little bit hesitant to set off. He's hit at nearly every fence on his way round. And like I say, I would normally normally be the first one to say he's hit every fence on the way round and he's still finished the runner on second. Like it was a remarkable performance. Mm. But for me, he's now gone from a two mile champion chaser to a three mile stayer in three runs. And there's more fences for him to hit here. I'm just concerned about him. And I don't really want to back him up at three to one now. Um, I'd rather sort of see how he gets on here. And again, like he wasn't overly impressive when he won at this meeting be- beating Fernando Silva a, a couple of years ago. I just think a, a Plutard was travelling so nicely in that Gold Cup. Um, he did jump a little bit out to the right, but I went back and watched his Gold Cup the year before. He did exactly the same thing, but he was travelling so easily. Like it, she was lobbing along on him, and he was hampered by the fall of a horse. And your literally ran over him, could do nothing about it. Could never get back in the race after that. It was it was lights out, but I just thought there was a little bit of zest in his in his travelling in, in that day. The, just the way he was moving, I don't know. There was there was it was like he was not done with. You go back to the Haydock run in the Betfair Chase, and he was found to be ill afterwards. So there's a clear and valid excuse for that. I just think that this could be. I think this track will definitely suit him. The way he travels strongly through a race, I think it will come there swinging. He's a, he's a speedy enough horse. I just think that this could be the time where he bounces back. He's He went off at four to one for the Gold Cup. Four to one, despite having pulled up in the Betfair chase and not run since the year before. He went off at four to one. He's now four to one for this race. I just I don't know, I just think he's a good bit of value in him um, at four to one. So um, we know he's a confirmed stayer, which is another thing you do sort of have to question a little bit about Shishkin. Um, and if he's not better than a Hoyce and York inflated in Garlaw, then they might as well retire him. Would you yeah. Have? Yeah, well, that's this is the thing with it, right? So I've I've sat on this race. I've gone through the whole, oh, you can make a case for this, or actually you can make a case for this, or you can make a case for this, or you can make a case for this. But everything bar Garlaw, there's a, it's not without the realms of possibility that they could do all right. Like, I think conflated will be suited to this race and Aintree more than he would have been a Gold Cup. Like, I don't th- I think that's too much of a test, but then he did run well to, what he, to do what he did. There have been lots of horses where they talk about, it, don't they? The ones that go and get beaten or get beaten in the Gold Cup, then come here and do it. Like, might bite after running against Native River. Everyone's saying he had a really hard race. Mm. I'm just up here. So, like, I've, I do think the four-week stuff. So, I, I I would trust all of it. 
that they're there to go on merit. And I would try not to read in too much of like how much of a hard race they may or may not have had at Cheltenham. But I do agree with the brave man's game thing. They're like, he could just be a stand in, could be that stuff. But he does look such a better horse this season. Uh, and I, I, I don't like forgiving horses for stuff. The Hoy Senor thing last year, like back to Hoy Senor in that race. And they say about the stomach stuff, and like Paul Nichols says that he left his race at Shelton and all that sort of stuff. When they make comments like that in the aftermath, you're like, you're talking shit. Then when he goes and does that, and then he goes and shits over in a Charlie Hall, shits over in a King George, and runs second in a Gold Cup, you think, I mean, fair, fair play. He probably was, like, whatever the excuse was, that, like, he, he knows the horse better than anybody else, and he was saying there was a valid excuse. I mean, I definitely think he's got a chance. But the the Plutard thing, I like I Hoy Senior, right? When they had this market put up, Hoy Senior was like eleven or two or five to one or six to one. And I was looking at it thinking, this could cut up, you know, like Shishkin might not come, like Glandersober wouldn't go. I was thinking Plutard's not definitely gonna travel over. And all of a sudden he's the same price now, even though the race is much deeper than it potentially could have been. And as much as I love a Hoy Senior, you know I do, he won a grade two Cotswold chase, didn't he? Like let's not beat around the brush. And he, he ran really well in the King George, Lucinda Russell said, but he was beaten out of sight, wasn't he? So yeah. I feel like it's one of those horses that probably on the upward curve and trajectory and stuff, he was maybe just a bit more forward as a chaser last season than something like Brave Man's Game, whereas Brave Man's Game now is miles ahead of him. You but like the Brave other... Man's Game then? Is this a long-winded, long-winded way of you saying that you like Brave Man's Game? No, because like I say, I went, I went around about it back and forth. And again, from a price perspective, like a Plutard going off at 4-1 for a Gold Cup and being 4-1 to one in this race, given the fact that when he, when he ran at Haydock, right, and like you said, there was an excuse after, I watched him in that, and I've said this about the Protector Act one, like, I was confused why Harry Skirton was following a Plutar, because I didn't think a Plutar was really going that well the whole way through. And it's easy to say after they pulled up to be like, oh, look at me with some foresight. But Skelton then did go on, and it was all fine, but I'd like, I didn't like that run so much. Then we ran at Cheltenham. It isn't your traditional putting up like the same as the Haydock one was, where you look at the race no. and think, oh, I could see this coming. And the fact that they did mind him and pull him up, despite the fact they were supporting all those types of things, would suggest to me they've tried to get him ready for the Gold Cup. He might not be, but they're minding him for it. Like, they know there'll be another day with him. But they also know there's not going to be, like, loads more days of him. So I feel like it's here, it's Punchestown or Cheltenham. Any one of those would do for him. And I think the fact that he's coming in here, they get, like he's going to be there to try. And I, I think that, that it's just there from, like, a price perspective. You've got a horse that's four to one behind Gallop into Jean. Gallop into Jean isn't here, regardless of where they finished. And then he's four to one against these lot. I feel like he's the one that I'd land on. But it feels like a race I'd rather just sit back and watch. Like I I haven't had a bet on a blue tide yet. I probably will have 20 or 30 quid for the sake of it, the fact it's Aintree, but I wouldn't I be getting right stuck in. I know, but Please I would, yeah, I mean, and he probably is, but I, I wouldn't get stuck in because like I said, it's just about the like like shit, like I, I can't trust Shishkin, but Shishkin could go and like do something. Brave Man's game could go and do something. Like a, 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 like a Hoy Senior should <coughs> Hoy Senior will need a Plutard Brave Man's game and Shishkin to all not do well. He'll probably need conflated to run crap as well. But I'd like yeah, I I, I don't want to get stuck in. But he's he's but he's the right selection, so I will just leave it as that. I think he's great value. All right. Love it. Um Aintree Hurdle, I'm probably gonna be backing Shark. No, I'm joking. Constitution <laughs> Hill's gonna shit him, isn't he? Fucking Sharjah. Patrick Mullins is a terrible rider, in my opinion. No need to mention that. Right, so we'll leave that. <laughs> the, like, there's a couple more races to go, but I'm conscious of like time and viewing retention and all that sort of stuff. We want to try and skim through some stuff. So I'm, I'm sure that some of the other races you would have had a look in and had a fancy in. You can make a case if you want to make a case. I'm going to shut up a little bit now. So the Fox Hunters, are you having a bet in it? Uh, I might have a bet in it. I haven't put a tip up in it. I might back a Magic Saint for Paul seems to get horses straight for his daughter Olive doesn't he so uh, um, I, I might have a bit on him he's a he's a fairly handicapped isn't he she had a winner as well on uh... she was on Shantou Flyer yeah she was Magic Saint as well as a horse that, that we spoke to Paul Nichols years ago when he was <laughs> playing at Cheltenham and said that he's a um, like a good ground horse there was only ever going to run him when he ran on good ground so that would be again we're not there isn't going to be abundance of rain is there but obviously the less rain there is and the drier it is the better chance he's got. So if it ever went soft, I think he's dead. In the like in this race, <coughs> I, I, I never get really like stuck into this race. I do get excited about it. Cat Tiger last year killed me because I fancied that quite strongly. And then it goes and gets beat, and it's just like I love David Maxwell. I was wondering where he is, to be fair, because lots of his horses have like, been ridden by him, but uh, like it was just annoying. So I I think that Winged Leader is like Winged Leader is going to 
shit home. But then there's always a horse in this fox hunters that we always think is going to shit home. It's the it's the wise guy horse, and it doesn't like stand up and fight a few years ago is another one of them. So I, I have had I've had fifty quid on wing leader. I think four to one about him on the exchanges isn't bad. But the two I'm going to have a little bit of a stab on as well is one's from a heart perspective, so it's great from a tip and show, isn't it? Ami Dubois, I love Ami Dubois. I'm having a little you bit do, on that. You do like that one. Trying to get about 150s on the exchange, whether I get it or not, I don't know. It, like he, he's like he proper still loves the game as well. Like I know he's a 13 year old and he shouldn't do it, but like I think he'll run all right. And in the Grand National when he got brought down, I I, he, I thought he was going right to be fair at a massive price. Anywho, but then a Desobo. There's always, again, there's always something that just like curve ball comes in that right, seems to run quite well or starts to get supported. This horse, if you go back a little bit, right? And I know we're reaching again, because I like to make a case that's reaching. He ran in a hunter's chase behind Vosele. And Vosele, obviously, you know, was well, well, well fancy for Cheltenham, wasn't it? Yeah. That's a couple of years ago, right? So that's back in May 2021. There is no Vosele in it, and it's not over the same sort of trip. Like, it's not a Cheltenham-type trip. So it's completely irrelevant, then. <laughs> not, but but in, in, in and around that time when he's running those sort of numbers, he's he's then run a couple of times after, but then he had a long, long break. And what he's done in his point-to-points after that, and then especially that that main hunter chase that he ran at Thurless, I don't care what he beat, like, looked like a like a, like an all-right horse. And considering he's a 10-year-old, I think he... I think he's better than when he was behind Vosele before. He may have progressed a bit. I just can't believe that he's a 25 to 1 poke. So I've had a little bit on him. Right. Interesting. The Red Rum Handicap Chase. Yes. I, I haven't read your column, but I guarantee I know that you've backed Dancing on my own. Yeah. Uh, you wouldn't have backed the last day because he mugged us off last year, but you would have mentioned him. No, well, no, I I have mentioned him. I, I tipped the last day last year and Dance on My Own. I tipped the one two in this race last year. I oh, know. I didn't I didn't back my, Dance on My Own. I got mugged off because I mean, I, I back, back Dance on My Own. I got mugged off because the last day one and you told me to back him. Yeah. So I've not tipped the last day, despite okay. the fact that he absolutely loves Aintree. The reason being is because sure. for some strange reason, they decided to go to Cheltenham with him um, and, he, and he pulled up. Uh, he ran absolutely terribly. Um, and he pulled up. Now he does love Aintree, but He's old this horse has got a good record coming like fresh to a race, right? Uh, so uh, the fact that he's turned around 29 days later doesn't doesn't sort of in- entice me in. I, I want to see him when he's fresh and well. Now, last year, Dancing on My Own obviously finished second to him, right? Now, Dancing on My Own last year went to Cheltenham and had a real slog in the Grand Annual. Do you remember? It was an yeah. absolutely atrocious race won by Global Citizen. He then came here three weeks later and just nearly made all, but just faded for his last day, just caught him in, inside the final 50 yards. They've skipped Cheltenham this year. Rachel's on. And I think that this has been his target. This horse, obviously, we know has been prepped right-handed at Ferry House last twice. He jumps out to the left. We've been through this before. He doesn't want to go right-handed. He wants to go left-handed. This is his time of year. Um, I thought it was a cracking run last year. They pulled absolutely miles and miles clear of Shake Him Up Harry, who's gone and run really well in again in the um, in, in the plate at the festival. I think the form's solid. I think he's very unexposed. He's been messed around with a lot of his career. I think this is his big day. So I think he's going to go well. I'll just make a case for another one. Um, Hatcher for, for Dan Skelton. Uh, I look, uh, this horse is a bit of a cliff horse for me, in all honesty, right? But I don't. I think the market's got a lot of this wrong, to be honest. I don't like Douglas talking at the top of it. Grey Diamond, I don't th- I'd like that horse, but he, he won last time. I don't think he sees out this long home straight entry. H- uh, Hatcher ran really well at... Um, um, at Ascot, he's turned out quite quickly. Second start after a wind up, he's won a couple of times. Second start after a wind up, but the most important thing about this horse is he's a spring horse. He's seven wins from 14 starts, including a couple of seconds and a fell and a fall. Um, and he goes extremely well from the months of like April to through to July. Now, he's normally targeted at air every year, yeah, but. This time around, they've turned him out quickly and come here. Tristan Durrell takes off five pounds, meaning he's effectively 20 pounds lower than when he would have won a listed chaser air this time last year. But he fell two out. Kane, they're absolutely cantering, cruising, fell two out. That was off 145. He's effectively off 125. He is too well handicapped to ignore. I thought there was plenty of promise in the run at Ascot um, the other week. And I think he's got to at least be in the frame off this sort of rating. If he doesn't, he might just sort of like run into third or hopefully or something like that. 
but back him at air if, if not, because he is ridiculously well handicapped. And um, he's just coming alive now. It's no coincidence that they're here second start after a wind off, I don't think. Now, you could say, well, why is Harry Skelton not on? Harry Skelton's on third time lucky. But I think Harry Skelton sort of has to pick sort of third time lucky over him, really, um, given that third time lucky's been in a bit of form. But I don't think this track suits third time lucky. I think he's made the wrong decision. Tristan taking off five gives him massive, gives Hatcher a massive, massive claim. So about 12, uh, 12 to one best price now. I think you go very close. Cheers. I liked Hatcher. And I believe that the Skeletons are running third time lucky because it puts his weight so far down that it, it's a benefit to him. It, like, it's, it, like, if he goes out, then they all got four pounds, didn't they? Not that it necessarily matters that much. They have run here a couple of times before, didn't they? He mm. was a bit unlucky in the Grand Dandy as well. But I feel like third time lucky's always just been that type of horse that just runs in lots of races. Looks like he should win more race than he does, doesn't. So yeah, I I did like Hatch with the prices. Third time lucky. If if he was twelve to one, I'd back third time lucky. When he's a nine to two poke, leave him well alone. So yeah, I I did actually quite like Hatcher, maybe not as strongly as you do, and I also agree with Dancing on my own. I'll just back him because he mugged me off last year. So easy in it, easy stuff. That love that red rum handicap chase. Love it. Mare's bumper. Oh, I don't. I ain't got nothing for this. I ain't, I ain't even bothered looking at this. No worries. See you in my dreams. I know I know that there'll be an Irish horse that everyone will be like, oh, the Irish horse will go and win it, and I'll probably be wrong, and an Irish horse will go and win it. This see you in my dreams, it will absolutely shit home. You reckon? Yeah, big on time. On the of what? That run at Newbury. Again, it's just, you know, like a horse just wins like like they're not even doing anything. I know it didn't quite work up for Hermes Allen, but there's no way Hermes Allen ran as he did in the baddie more. Like, that wasn't his true running. This see you in my dreams look good. Nichols does all right in this bumper. Think, like he's, a, like, he's even done it in the boys' bumper as well, like Nappy Hill and stuff like that. And he, I, I think this is, I mean, this horse is like, I think she's pretty good. Yeah, she looked very good, but I just I don't know. Was she beaten? Yeah, was exactly. She... It's a, it's a bit of a pun, but like she's, like, I, I feel like she should be like, a, I don't know, a bit shorter than she is. The Irish horses all hold up the prices. There's Would you no rather pun. back her at seven to two or a blue tile at four to one? Her at seven to two. You fucking liar. Lost the game. Lost the game. <laughs> right. Best bet for Thursday then. A Flutard? Yeah, I think Flutard's cracking, cracking price. Hatcher each way, Flutard. My my best bet, but I do agree with you in the in terms of the fact that it's like Gee bloody one. I, I just I just can't I cannot see how Zenta gets beat if she's chosen mm. the same one as she's at Cheltenham. So I think I I don't think six to four is too bad. She was seven to four when she first opened up. Like if she starts getting short, short, five to four, even money type poke. As much as it can get exciting to get stuck into those ones, like I wouldn't want to be getting massively stuck in. But no, I you wouldn't keep plowing in, would you? No. Anywho, Friday, Angel. Yeah. We'll try a little bit quicker. Not that we necessarily need to. I um, I sent a WhatsApp earlier to Aaron and George because I said I wanted six to four Jerry Colom. Mm-hmm. Asked him that because he was saying no chance. I've noticed that he's even money across the board, isn't he? Yeah. So I did, before we came on air, I put a £200 at 6-4 to four on Betfair Exchange to see if it would, uh, I don't know if we get any nibbles for it, because I feel like that's the price I'd like to go in at. Hang hey on, drum roll, drum roll, did we? Oh no, I'll have a, there's, no, there's no way it's been matched, is there? But anyway, like, I, like, Je- I, I, I proper fancy Jerry Colom. Uh, I watched the race back because I was a bit kissing my, like, kicking myself off, because I think just Davey just balls it up. It, potentially where they're saying, like he looks outpaced on the race post comments, I, I don't think he was really outpaced. I don't think he was done for like tactical speed in the middle of the race. I, I don't, like if he was outpaced, that would worry me for somewhere like Aintree because you could get run ragged there. I just, I just think he's going to shit home. Like I'm like like I put I, I said I said when we did the um, Cheltenham stuff when we were talking about Side of Burley because you tipped up a hundred to one winner at Cheltenham. I was saying about I've had things like Bron, didn't I? I put him up like a fifty-one poke and they come like third and stuff. And then like, there's other outsiders I've been other races where they're like. They're running all right at big prices. But again, if we look at Cheltenham prices to now, Jerry, right, the Bron was too big at Cheltenham. Let's not get away from that. Bron should have been like a 14s or 16s one point. But Jerry Colomb was 5 to 4, Bron was 50s. Jerry Colomb beat Bron. And Jerry Colomb, like, I think, should have done better. But he beat Bron. So he didn't lose. Jerry Colomb's an even money poke or say 5 to 4, but Bron's 100 to 30. Like, it's just, just stupid. That Gallia Delito. <laughs> no, chance. Yeah, she like she doesn't she doesn't really jump very well, and I do quite like her. when she won that race at Warwick. I was a bit annoyed by myself because I thought the other horses were being like the Goffer was in there, um, this complete unknown was in there as well. I think, but I just feel like they, they were giving them horses too much respect. So Gala Delito beat complete unknown by miles, 
and they're the same price in there. Like the market's got that but like wrong as well. Thomas Darby is a 14 to 1 poke in here. Put Thomas Darby in that RSA at Cheltenham. He's like <coughs> I just I just I think it's all wrong. And I just think like I think There's Jerry, only one horse that can shorten, isn't there? Jerry Colomb goes off yeah. two's off. Yeah. But but I like I I fancy him quite strong. But this is where like I, I saw he was entered and I saw the anti-post market. I saw he was like seven to four, thirteen to eight. And I, I wish I'd got stuck in, but I've made the hard and fast rule because I've been stung so many times, especially with Altior last season, <laughs> where I'm not doing the short-term anti-post. Like, I, the value can just stick up his ass because I've, I've got the numbers of the bets that I've done. By the time I get one of them to actually bloody run, I would have been better to not put the other four or five bets on and have four or five as much on. So I have with this. This is one that we'll have to see if we can get the price. I'd happily take five to four about him. I'm be a nice, if... nice cross the day double, wouldn't it? Zenta and and, and... well, let's, potentially let's, we I could build I... a little treble here, couldn't we? I, I could do that to stop myself having to put so much on, but yeah, I've I've put two hundred in there. I mean, it has is nowhere near being matched. But I'll I don't know if he's even money across the board. I feel like I might get a bit of fired for somewhere. I'll go to a shop if I can get it. But I'm like, I'd I'd go as low as even money to back him. Like I'd be happy enough to do him at that. So if the money starts going and I feel like I'm not going to get it. I will better get on. So I'm having a couple of hundred quid on Jerry Plummet Evans. He's going to shit home. Yeah, I agree. He like, he should be twos on as well. Yeah, I think he should. I think the I, not, I think the long home straight ain't you give him plenty of time to warm up. I think he I think he'll love it. Same. And the the key thing with it as well is when we talk about like not this probably is recency bias, but like stage star goes and wins there. We talk about the price differentials between them and like a Bambridge in the race. If Jerry Colom had have just got up and won by a head, or rather than getting beat by a head. That's another influential thing that would change his price because then he would have finished two places in front of Bron. Like I just, I just think the, I just think he's the only one that can get backed. So I, I, just, I just think he's stupid. I, I, I make him a twos on shot, and I'd say I wouldn't back him at twos on, but I think even twos on is being generous. He'll shit him. Two twenty, the uh, handicap hurdle. I started to look at this, and then I started to look away because this is very much one of those races where you start going down some of the horse, and you're like, back to him, <coughs> back to him, back to him, back to him, back to him. Back to him, and I don't want to do it. I don't want to get stuck into these ones. So I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm borderline not even going to bother looking at this race. So unless you can point me into something, uh, Camprond. Oh, stop it! He should have won at Cheltenham. Should have won at Cheltenham, but he didn't. But he rallied really well. He bumped into two very well handicapped horses in an epic song and Langer Dan. Um, there's no none of that type of the type of horse in here. Um, so Camprond, I think, will take a world to be. I also think that the Coral Cup is much, much, much stronger than the Martin Pipe as well. So uh, the next two in uh, obviously ran in the um, in the Martin Pipe, finished second and third. I think he's uh, I think he's well clear. Obviously, he didn't get his win again at Cheltenham this year, but uh, he went to Punchtown last year, didn't he? And absolutely dotted up after on the back of Cheltenham. I think he goes well All this right. time of year. I think he just a quick one. Um, sure. Off your Rocco, Jamie's horse. Thought ran a blinder for much of the race in the Coral Cup. On ground, he probably wouldn't have liked. He's fairly handicapped here. Kieran Buckley claims three off. He's basically running off 129. If the ground's in any way decent, I think uh, he could go well at a big price. Like it. Happy days. I mean, I'm definitely going to back Cameron. Like I said, I couldn't be bothered to look yeah. at the race. I feel really like lazy for saying it, but it's Friday decks, isn't it? Um, the top novices hurdle. Mm. 14 bad boy runners in there. Mm. I obviously got stuck into Lucia before Cheltenham. The, 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 honestly, the exchange market was weird as shit about her. Like they were laying two to one about her when she was top price, like like five to four somewhere else. I was getting, I got 11 to four just before final declarations when she was seven to four everywhere else. And I was thinking, am I being an idiot? She's not going to be declared. So I feel like there's more to come from her. I feel like someone somewhere knew she wasn't quite right for Cheltenham, but she may have been right for Cheltenham and she may just have not done it. She's semi tempting for me because all the other horses that are in here, in the pocket, I I can't believe didn't run in the valley more. And I know he's come fourth in a supreme, and you'd say that it would be all right and it like, could be okay. But I wouldn't say that Aintree two miles is going to be more of a test than Cheltenham. So I, I I think he needs more of a test to show what he needs to do. Then when you start looking at some of the other ones like that Tamaris, as much as like he could be okay, and it is Nichols coming here, he's probably a, like an okayish price, but. He's he's got he's only going to be like maybe mid one forties at best. <clears throat> I just think really? Lucia, given what she, like maybe it wasn't like that much of a like a a, a great performance, at Cheltenham. But I thought she ran all right at Cheltenham, and when she ran at uh, Newbury on the good round, I thought she needed soft. 
She ran really well at Newbury and then she ran well at Exeter on good ground. And as much as she won her bumpers on those soft ground, I wonder whether it might have been a little bit too soft for her at Cheltenham as well. So I think the good to soft would be happy with her. Getting the seven pounds, 14 runners in there. You might even get four places with some people. I reckon she's a stonking muggy each way. But I, do, I think she'll win. I might have a little bit on Tamarish, you know, as a saver. But what do you think of it? Um, I agree with you in terms of in the pocket. Uh, the horses that come from the Supreme Novice tend to have quite a good record in this. Um, but I thought he ran to mid-140s there, or just, just below mid-140s maybe. I'm not having Marina National ran to like 160 something. I think he ran to like mid 150s. Um, and I thought and, and I thought he had more in the in the locker, and whereas in the pocket was absolutely all out and couldn't hold off diverge up the run in. So I, I'm surprised like you, he didn't run in the Ballymore, but I just think he's uh I just think he's a little bit tripless at the moment. And I think he's a little I think he's a 140 source. Do you get what mm. I mean? Like I don't yeah. think he's I don't think a trip is going to improve him. Ten pounds at the moment, um, so I kind of wanted to steer clear from him, but I do want to be with the Irish because the Irish had the first eight home in the Supreme. They've absolutely dominated the Nov- novice hurdle division this year, so I don't want anything from Britain. That includes the cheer for me. <laughs> Sorry, Dave. Um, sure. I think that Oliver McKernan's no looking back has a chance at sixteen to one. Now I think you're probably going to need to run into the mid one forties. Maybe high one four. I think you're going to need to run to about one four eight to win this. One four seven, one four eight. Right. This horse at Nace last time behind Irish Point was trying to give Irish Point nine pound. He let Irish Point make all and just just set really steady fractions. Turned it into a sprint. Got slightly outpaced and then ran on really strongly at the finish, trying to give him nine pound. That would put him in the high 140s bracket, right? If Irish Point has run up to a 140 there. Time before that, he beat Brazil on heavy ground, despite jumping like an absolute bag of shite uh, in the Kew Gardens at Limerick. It's only a two-runner race, but obviously Brazil, we know, is a so- sort of solid 140 horse. Since this horse has gone over hurdles, he's just improved and improved and improved. So last time at Nace, he left the impression that there was loads more to come. It's not often you see an Oliver McKern and horse coming over to to the UK. I think 16 to one best price, Bam. I think that's too big because I do think he's got the potential to run into the mid one forties. So I'm going to, I'm going to be back in him. Um, and I think I, I like this founder 50 quite a lot. Um, I like him quite a lot. The, the time figures he's done the last twice have been quite remarkable. So there was a horse that finished third in the Martin pipe called buddy one. Who's in the handicap previous to this, right? He ran on the same card as founder 50 over two mile four, but the two mile circuit was more than eight and a half seconds slower than what founder 50 recorded when he beat Parmenian by nine limbs. They went to obviously Nace last time, got done by a head by Corbett's cross who absolutely tanked through that Albert Bartlett. He absolutely tanked through it. And, um, I just maybe just quite didn't quite see out the three miles Corbett's cross, but that was over two miles. They went a really good clip. It was they were hammering tongs. It was a proper proper novice hurdle. I thought that he was possibly the best novice hurdler not going to Cheltenham. So I think Founder Fifty's got a big big chance. He's an improving horse. I don't see why he, he won't run into the high one forties as he has done the last twice. So for me, him and no looking back will be the two plays in the race. I like it. And it's good as well because it's. I feel like it's priced where it's friendly for everyone, isn't it? Like those types of ones. Agreed. there. Like, under 50 could be like a three to one poke and you're like, oh, like, well, you still want to back him. But like, I think I think there's juice in a few of them. Don't be afraid to back a couple. Mars Chase, the Melon Chase. Mm. Look, I'm going to get stick for this because I always say it. Fakir Doodries isn't a proper grade one horse. Fakir Doodries is going to be wearing pieces in this. When we like, like I said, like not, it's not the same as a Betway Bob, but when you start to run through it a little bit, it feels like it's back here, dude. Which is like a price, like is he backable? Like, should I? Am I being stupid by not backing? Like when Clam comes back here and does it. So I haven't looked at this in too much depth, but to even just to quickly run through it now, French Dynamite, no chance. Fugitive, no chance. Miller's Bank talked about the one here, wonder. I don't think he's got a chance. Manila Drama, I don't like Northern rated. Like Jobs big is right. Pick door, he was so bad here last year that I would never back him at Aintree again. And I don't know what he did last year, but I backed him before the race. I thought 72 was a stonking price as well. It just was just shit from the first hurdle. Like he was never at the race that day. So obviously, potentially that wasn't his running, but oh, I, I don't like it. So he's obviously taken up in the market and then Harry Cobden's on it. 
I I do like Hitman. And I feel like Hitman last year in that Fakadudri's run because um who was it that Lorcan. He didn't go okay. early enough for him. He sat there too long. Yeah, but I was trying to, who was it that did Cobb yeah, who was it Cobb, yeah, Cobden Road St. Cowell, didn't he? And he was yeah. the one that kept back and all the time left right and didn't he? But we we both liked Hitman, didn't we, for the race yeah. And we did backpack it, but we didn't back. I, no, I didn't backpack it because he was just way too short, I think. But we like, like Hitman ran real well, didn't he? But yeah, it was just that, wasn't it? Like he just, I don't think it was the best ride. And they've handled this horde with, I, horse, I feel like with kid gloves the whole time. Like they they don't, they, they know they've got time with him. They've run him in proper races, but they don't mind trying their best with him. And if they don't like it, putting him up type stuff. That Ryanair run for him was mega for like a first look at Cheltenham. Mm. To really be beating three lengths in a Ryanair, considering the horse is like just turned a seven-year-old, I I, I think that Fakir Dudu isn't the same horse as he was last year. I think Hitman is a better horse than he was last year, and considering there was what was it, maybe five or six lengths between the two of them, I would be confident to say that Hitman's reversed that already. So I think he at five to one is a bet. I would be a bit worried of Pictor because I do think Pictor is a good horse, but I I think Hitman's. I think Hitman's like an up and coming, like the mid trip, not quite a great one horse. It's going to mop up a few races. So I, I'd, quite, I'd be quite strong on Hitman given the fact that he's a five to one poke and it wouldn't bother me that Lorcan's on instead of Cobden. I have I see the race exactly the same as you, pretty much. Pretty much. Ooh. I couldn't have picked Dory. I, his form tends to tail off as well, like after sort of February. I know he was ahead of Fakir last time, but I don't think that's Fakir's track, Ascot. He fell in the he fell in in the race last year over two for gold like before coming here and dotting up. Um, I have been saying for the last few runs of Faki that I don't think that he's the same horse he was last year. I think the lot the the amount of racing he's had has probably taken its toll on him. However, this is entry and this is this is his bag. Like yeah. this, this is exactly what he wants and. He's won the race for the last two years. The cheek pieces go on for the first time, which I find a little bit interesting. Scary. Um, not, yeah, it is scary because they are almost admitting that they need to sort of spark him up, whereas perhaps I would have left those off until after entry and see how he ran here. But this has been his target, no doubt about that. This yeah. is what they thought about. This is all they've done. Whereas Hitman, who obviously has tongue-tied cheek piece on for the first time at, Cheltenham last time did run a much much better race, but again, if you watch him back, he still doesn't really finish off his race there, mm. and it's he's a little bit frustrating. I think that Fakir Daderis does him for pace. He's he's a quicker horse than him, but the cheek pieces do concern me a little bit. I I think he's a I think Fakir Fakir Daderis is a very fair price at around nine four five to two to go. Okay, if he's not the best, if he's not the horse he was last year, he's not the horse he, la- he was last year. But I think yeah. he's a very, very fair price considering he went off at ten to eleven last year to win this race. Like, so I'm happy to back him at the prices given his record at this venue. Um, you know what it's like. Some horses don't take the entry, some do. He loves it here, so yeah, I'm gonna stick. I'm gonna stick with Fak here, but I do think hit. I think it'll be the same one two as last year. Yeah. I like I could, I do I like I, I do like Fakir. I just it's just it's that those year after year stuff. The Cheltenham run when he comes and wins it the first time when he was two to one beating Nuts well, he ran to like one six nine. When he came here after after like the February last time, ran to one six seven. That last run at Ascot, which I agree with, the track's not there, so you 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 definitely can temper that race for the slightest because when he beat Nuts well, like that's not as good a rating form as it should have been. Like they were oh, sorry, not Nuts well. The, when he ran at Ascot before two for gold, sorry that he beat. Yeah. Wasn't one six seven like rated performance uh, to me because he was that close to that horse, and he was running against some better horse like we'll say like better class horses. Not saying they are miles better than him, but I still just don't like the fact that when you look at like there when he's run second to Alaho before he's coming off the back of a win, he just he just, de- he just definitely isn't the same horse anymore. And as much as he's only an eight year old, he has been on the go for a fair old while. And oh, yeah, I'm, I'm against him. I, I fancy Hitman. I think Hitman's the wrong price. I reckon Hitman's going to get smashed up as well. Fact yeah, is, he might do. Back. Back, back, he won't go off five to two, I don't think, though. Uh, no, I think he'd go off about 13 to eight. He went, yeah, exactly. He went off seven to four against them. Just a quick one before we move on to anything else with the cheek PC type stuff. Mm. 
when like if I if I like if I think of a horse that I, like I feel like it needs headgear, my normal go to with it is I think a horse is being a bit of a dodge if I want it to put cheap pieces on. I want it to concentrate. I want it to look all right. Fakir Deidre ran all right behind Galloping Dijon. Didn't look like he wasn't trying. Fakir Deidre looked good when he ran at Furless and went and won. I don't know. I don't have Furless though. At Furless, I thought he was racing very lazily. He was okay. he was on the on the outside. I, I backed him that day and tipped him that day. I, he was on the outside. I was never really happy. He he looked like JJ was always asking him for an effort at every fence. So I so that's why why they don't actually bother me as much as as if they just randomly came on. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Because that's it. It's just, it's just with that. Like it is when when a horse gets a bit of headgear on. Sometimes you look at it and think you can see why they're doing it. Other times it's a bit like. Why are they doing it? And I, I, I'm more of the camp of, I think they're just clutching. Oh, That's fair enough. But they might not be. It is Aintree, and I feel stupid for not saying it. Hitman's going to shit home. Um, it's a shame there's only seven runners though. Like no one's going to be doing extended. If that was eight races and you were getting five, to, five to one, eleven to two, Hitman, lump. Anywho, there's the Topham chase. I've, I never know what to do in the Topham. I mean, did Al Dancer win it once? Uh, yeah, last year, right? Guess no. Kill was favourite last year, maybe or something like that. I'm gonna I'm gonna throw in Kiltiri Briggs. There you oh. go, done. For no reason, just saying a horse. Who are you going for? No, I don't like getting involved in this race. I don't know what I'm looking for and what like okay, move I'll... on then. Yeah. <laughs> the Sefton novice's hurdle. I like the Sefton. Always have, always will do. Stay away, Faye. Semi frustrating for me the fact that he went and won at Cheltenham. When he ran at Newbury that first time, when we talked, to, like, we, uh, there was a couple of other Nichols horses around that day. I liked him, but it was it was a, just a little bit like, why, like, why do we really like him? Then mm. the Cheltenham run's pretty good. I, I like, I, I feel like he like he he should just go and win this, but I don't know what it is that's stopping me thinking he's done nothing wrong. This is going to be a much easier race than it was at Cheltenham. So why am I not piling into him? Mm. So do you? Is, do you, is there any reason why I'm not piling into him? Like, absolute notions. He does look like a really good horse. Obviously, Skip Shelton has got the form in behind Goodland that looks like all right ish in it, and then it's got that run where it was behind in the pocket when in the pocket ran over the right trip. But Goodland didn't go and win at Cheltenham. In the pocket was running over two and a half, and they're still persistent with two miles, so they're not saying that was necessarily the best, best trip. So I, I just don't think absolute notions is as good as they're making it out. But what? Like, why is why is stay away Frey such a big price? Don't know. Worrying, isn't it? Because like I know it's like I know it's not massive, but like I feel like three to one about a horse that's just gone won the Albert Bartlett. It's won it all right, and he. I just I, just, I like I don't I don't think he ran that race again. There's much difference. I know like Corbett's you can the horse that beat him at six to one. If you want, what Maximilian? Yeah, yeah, but Northern Raider, isn't he? Don't believe that Doncaster run either. No, I don't either. I think Stay Away Favour is a better horse than that race. So we'll have to see. But yeah, so I, 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 this is the first time I've looked at it since the final deck race for us with you. I would like absolute notions makes me laugh because I just want to keep saying absolute no chance. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, I, wouldn't back, I wouldn't back absolute notions at three to one. No, thanks. Not what about Iroko? What'd you make of him? No, I, I thought he, I, I was quite taken actually with his Martin Point win. I was quite surprised, but. Um, no, I just think it was circumstantial. I, I, I don't know. No, I don't like. I don't like him. I've never liked him. So even if I can't, if, even if I can make a good case for him, I don't like the horse. I won't side of him. Do you know what I mean? Fair enough. So I'm gonna have a little bit on stay away Faye. That'll probably be like a a one pointer. I'll probably have like thirty quid of stay away Faye because I think a three to one. I don't need to have much more on. And I, I the one is like, if stay away Faye was like a two to one poker. I'd still be tempted to back it, but I wouldn't want to get stuck in. It's more a bet for the sake of a bet because I'd be more annoyed if it wins again and I didn't have any on. Bad way for betting, isn't it? Um, mm. Conditional jockeys and amateur riders race. You getting stuck the fuck into JPR one? I knew you was going to say that. He did win quite well the other day. I missed his run the other day. Um, no, no, I won't, won't be getting stuck into him. I haven't. Uh, to be honest, Dave, I haven't looked at this race. This is the first time I'm seeing it now. What about Go Dante? Jamie Codd's been booked for Ollie Murphy. Ollie Murphy's flying stable form. You love a bit of stable form. Oh, fuck it now. But this is a this. <laughs> First time I've looked at it as well, but it's a it's a novelty race. I would I will definitely, 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 definitely be back in Go Dante and JPR one, and then I'm not going to bother looking at the rest of it. I know it's lazy to not look, but I'll tell you one thing. Right, this pissed me right off. This should, here we go. This should have been a rant. 
So when Cheltenham finishes, you stop looking at racing, right? Well, you do. Yeah. Been doing bits and pieces, busy on weekends and stuff like that. Had a little look at the results on the 2nd of April, the Sunday, I think it was. Right. Just skimming through the racing post. Blue King Drew wins at 50 to 1. And I remember backing him at Cheltenham in the November meeting when he was dog shit behind script right and he was sent off a 6 to 4 favour. I even remember me and you talking about the horse. <laughs> and I saw the 50 to 1 and I thought, no, oh, that's a different horse, isn't it? Like that, that. That does not go off 50 to 1 on handicap debut when it's been sent off 6 to 4 in a grade 2. Like, that's not possible. Do you know what the funny thing about this? I was watching Betfair's decks with uh, Ditchit's decks with Paul Nichols, and he goes, How on earth this horse has got a mark of 127? I don't know. He's got absolutely no chance off that sort of mark. He wouldn't get within a street of Affidel. <laughs> I backed Affidel. <laughs> It's, mate, it's, it's killer, in it? But I, I, just, I just saw that. I saw the SP, and I know, like, I know it doesn't matter, but it's there. A horse that goes off six to four in a grade two at Cheltenham, regardless of how they finish, is not 50 to one on handicap debut, regardless of what mark they've given it. Unless, they, or unless they've given it like a 150 or something. Anyway, I was fuming about that. Um, I, I don't want him to go and do anything again, but maybe he will. But yeah, I'm going to back JPR1. I always like JPR1. That comeback run was pretty good after a bit of a break. But could be bounced, couldn't it? But I'm doing, I've got to, I've got to have a bit of go, don't they? Jamie Codd on there for Oni Murphy looks interesting. <laughs> Saturday. We've got to do Saturday. I'm just I'm sorry, I was just going back to see why why is Jamie Codd riding for him? I don't know, but worry worry more about what the horse can do rather than who's riding it. <laughs> oh shit. Right. <laughs> Saturday, we're gonna get this done in 10 minutes. So we don't know for definite who is running in, in all of these races, but we do know that in the Maghole Novices Chase, Bambridge won't go. We know that Saint Moir won't go, and we know that John Bond's gonna run and John Bond's probably gonna go and win, right? Yeah, probably. Leave it as that then I reckon. Or do you reckon there's anything to try and take him on with? Nah, nah, not really. All right, we'll leave that alone. He'll be short 50 enough. runners next, Dave. In the village hotels. Well, we don't. Runners. If if there's anything you want to like touch on within this, then we can have a look at it. The one that I would be tempted to just mention is walking on air because like had had been running over three miles for like the last few runs, didn't it? I thought ran all right at Cheltenham in the attempts final, and I feel like the soft ground was enough to cost him the race at Cheltenham. 138, he was there. 138, he is here. How he's not gone up in the mark after coming, well, only beaten four lengths in the attempts. Where, like I say, I believe the ground is enough to say that he like it would have cost him a few lengths. So I reckon he's an all right price if he comes. Yeah, I'd, I'd agree. Took a big step forward, I thought for for Cheltenham. A good time. Jolly was a very very worthy winner, wasn't he? Um, I don't know if he'd be the most reliable to go and back it up, but uh, he's a nice enough horse. Good time, Johnny. He's a proper horse on his day, isn't he? Um, yeah, Why? no real opinion, mate. That will win. The um, two and a half mile, the Mersey Novices hurdle. Again, there's horses dotted all over the place that could be doing all sorts of bits. One horse that, again, from like an entry perspective thing that wound me up was Dark Raven. Why the hell did they run him in the Supreme? Pissed me right off. But then I know that the connections had the winner of the Baddie Morse. That's why they're going to do it. So if Dark Raven comes over, Dark Raven wins by half the track, I think. Hermes Allen's the interesting one, isn't he? Because I, I do not believe that Cheltenham run, but there's a there's an err with me right about him that if I'm if I'm really gonna have to believe that the Cheltenham run was dog shit and it wasn't like a true level thing, I've now got to trust that in four weeks they've fixed it. <laughs> and and like, and that and that's that's my conundrum with it, that whatever whatever the reason was at Cheltenham for him to underperform, because he did underperform at Cheltenham, like, you know, the, like the winner of the Mayors and obviously stuff, spanked all his tallow form in retrospect and stuff. He wow. like, He's not that far behind the other horses, but can like can I really trust him? Like, can I trust them to have fixed it in four weeks is what I'm basically asking you. You hate him anyway, didn't you? I'm not mad. Well, I don't, I don't hate him. I think yeah. hate's a strong <laughs> word, but I don't, I don't think he's as good as, as everyone likes to think he is. All right. <laughs> So, but regardless of that, like his Cheltenham run there, would you look at it more like that? Would like, do you think that was definitely like his run in at Cheltenham? Oh, I, to be honest, I don't really know because, like, it's like he had everything. Sort of, he was still swinging there, jumping the third last. He was yeah. 
everything in his favour. He had pole position. He just wasn't. I just don't think he was good enough. Like sometimes, I don't think you have to find excuses. I think you just have to say, well, he was beaten by a better horse. Well, better horse is. Like you got to remember, he was. He had a strong field up against him that day. Yeah. Um, I, I just don't think he like he's still. I'm just watching it back now. He, coming round the bend, he's still in the first quartet. Like, I just think he's been, been beaten by better horses. Like in the in the, like I said to you in the cello, I didn't like the cello. I know you can say the forms worked out everywhere, but it's worked out in fucking Mickey Mouse races, not in proper races. I know you wear it well, won the mayor's hurdle. Exactly. The but mayor's, if yeah, but she. The mayor's novice, like she was another one who was well positioned, like really well positioned, um, and just kept galloping and made all the running. Like she's not a bad horse. I said to you in the cello, if on the cello run, she raced at the rear of the field because they were stepping up in distance, and she raced at the rear of the field. She did exactly the same circuit time as Hermes Allen did. Hermes Allen was miles ahead, had a massive advantage over her. So and but, and but, how yeah. and, and let me ask you this: How how good do you think you wear it well? Is like so give me when, a when, when we when we went through it before we went through the challenge, didn't we? And I said to you that she was too big a price because given what she'd done, she probably was a mid one thirties mare. Yeah, and then getting seven pounds from Hermes Allen, he's bitten by four legs. So I feel like Hermes Allen, like there, I was using that as I don't think that was bad form. The, I, I know we can pick and choose whatever bits we want, but Marble Sands was thirty seven lengths behind him in the shallow, beats him at Cheltenham. Marble Sands hasn't improved because Marble Sands has been novice hurdling for donkey's years. There's no way Hermes Allen's regressed 40 lengths from Newbury. I'm not, I'm not saying he's regressed 40 lengths, but um, I what I am saying is that for 95% of that race, he's probably ran his race. Maybe now, he wasn't. He wasn't beaten. He wasn't beaten 20 lengths at the turn and the turning for home, was he? Like. Uh, Cobden, did you see Cobden when he came in when they interviewed him on the TV? Because they, they try and grab the jockeys, didn't they? What did he say? <laughs> it's fully toys at the pram. Uh, Willie Mullins' tactics weren't there, didn't they? Yeah, well, that was that was what what was weird about that race as well because the pre pre race interview, Paul Nichols said, um, "Yeah, I think the Irish are going to try some sort of tactics on us here and try and bully us out of this here." I think they've got. He should have just gone on. Harry they? Cobden obviously came out of the dress of the weighing room and obviously said. Oh, they're planned on doing something. They didn't he do nothing. It. They had no, his own way out. He front. bottled it. He should. He should have gone on, shouldn't he? Yeah, he just. He didn't like. He didn't like. He was still in pole position for for he, the entire race. Like, I don't he, understand he, where these tactics have thrown him off. Kind of, kind of, kind of, didn't he? Like he didn't. He didn't want to go on and make the running. Whereas that race for Hibrisco and like in the Chalo, he just went on with him. Like I think he just bottled it. I think he tried too hard to feel like my horse has got to learn to settle. I, I can't just go and ride from the front. He was scared of losing the race. And I think that's what's caused it. But we'll have to see. I like. I do think Dark Ravens will be running in the like the right thing. I like. He would be the one that I, like I think can run well if he does come here. Authorized Speed was one, wouldn't he? That at the beginning of the season looked like he could be like a half decent horse stepping up in trip as well. So he's too big a price. So I will definitely be having a bit on him if he. Uh, he's definitely going to run, I think. But I, I like it's the Hermes Allen thing. I'm. I don't know what I'm going to do. You'll find out when I put my video up about what I'm backing or not. I don't know what to do. Do I? I, I can't, do I trust that it was tactics? Do I trust that there was there? I, I reckon there was something up. Anywho, it doesn't matter. Just quickly touching on, look, why? Why are you running authorized speed in in a in a in a race where you're going to have to be improve fifteen pounds on your official rating when you can to run win it, it, and you could run in a handicap of one hundred thirty three? Like, Very <clears throat> it's not like the prize money is hugely different, is it? Fifty six grand. What's the what's the handicap on the card? Just for you're gonna lose ten grand, ish. There, yeah. like I don't understand. I don't understand why trainers do that. I think that's where a lot of British trainers go wrong. Ag yeah, agreed. But I do, I, I do think this off speed needs a step up in trip. Like that first run when he ran at Lingford was like pretty good, but I just don't think he jumps very well. And that's that's maybe where it comes into it in a like a big hustle and bustle handicap type stuff where they're probably. <clears throat> He'll go quick in this, but he'll be able to sit wherever he wants. I, you know, I do agree, but he's a price. I think he's got a bit of a squeak. Hermes Allen, I don't know if we're going to back him or not. We've definitely talked about that race for too much. Are you having a bet in it? Not, not until I see final decks, mate. So I don't know. And then he falls deep on Hermes Allen. I hope they don't declare that I haven't got to think about the quandary. <laughs> Bomo, in it. You know, it's like the horse that disappointed Cheltenham and going start up there. Um, the Liverpool, is it? Yes, yeah, the Liverpool hurdle after it, the three mile one. Yep. 
How worst you... favourite of the entire week in this. The worst favourite? What is Marie's Worst Rock? favourite in the entire week. Marie's Rock. Who the hell is going to back Marie's Rock? Oh, my the first God. time over three miles at 11 to four you... when she's <laughs> officially got £10 to find. Right, I know she gets the allowance, but ten pound or well, at least five pound a fine. Never ran over the trip. Has bombed out at Cheltenham last time, and is eleven to four favourite for a Grade One three miles. Third race. Have you seen? Have you seen what? Have you seen what I've just seen? What? What? Monroe. Oh yeah, yeah. I see that earlier. Monroe. <laughs> oh god. Here we go. So, so, yeah, this is the first time I've even looked at the entries. Anything, but that's how much of a mug I am with the betting stuff. I, I put up Prashima for the stayers because I thought it could be like a windy enough renewal. And obviously, we decided about to go to win it. Well done, fit over 100, but just confirms it wasn't like an absolute world of a race. He's too big a price. I'll be having a bit on uh, Prashima. I will, I, like, I wouldn't be like making a suggestive bet. There's no way in the world of letting Mumble go on back. <laughs> I'll, have a, I'll have a token pound on him. Of all the big kids, right? So, like your champs, if he does run, you obviously had Sider Burley. Pua Pua in there was pretty good run when it even Time Hill. Coming back to, like, a stomping ground, he's done well. Floor and Porter ran well in the race last year, although it was obviously beaten. Home by the lead was probably unlucky in the stairs, I thought. I think this is much more competitive of a Liverpool hurdle than I've seen in recent years. Who are you going to be having your bollocks on? Who won the race last year? Oh, Sayed <laughs> Did you, did you back him at Cheltenham? Well, this, <laughs> shut up. I'll tell you what I didn't do, though. I did back him the year before at Cheltenham in a attempt when he got really badly hampered and then didn't even make the top six places. And then I didn't back him in this race when he went and bolted up at 16 to 1. <laughs> you, were you um, on Porter as well? Eh? Last, were you on floor in Porter as well in this last year? No. Oh. I was on, who was Damn. I on last year? I can't Damn. remember. Champ. Champ. Yeah. Champ. Champ, yeah, champ. Anyway, champ. Who, you, who you getting stuck into? Because I know you liked meet and greet for a stairs at a big price for a while back, and they never even let him go in, it, did they? No, that, for some reason they dropped him back to two miles to run in a grade three, and then ran in the Boyne hurdle like bonkers training, absolute bonkers. Um, anyway, I'll be with Tahipu. Good run, wasn't it, at Cheltenham? Really good run at Cheltenham. Really, really good run. Didn't hadn't confirmed his stamina before that. Absolutely tanked through the race. Was given, I thought again, I didn't think it was a great ride by Davy Russell, but um, I think Davy Russell could make up for it here. I don't think they need to hang him too far out the back like they did at, at Cheltenham. I don't think now that now he's a confirmed stayer, I think they'll be ridden a little bit more handily. This speedier track, I think, will definitely suit him. He's obviously got that two and a half mile pace. Um, good to soft ground, I think it's fine for him. I, I'm not, I wouldn't be overly concerned about sort of. Sort of the ground, um, I suppose. Backing up thirty days later is a is a question mark, but I do think he's probably probably the best horse in the race. And I'll fa- I, I, you know, if I fancy him for a stay as hurdle next year at ten to one, I think ten to three in this is a is a really really attractive price. To be honest, I cannot believe Marie's Rock is as short as she is. Floor and Port, I, I I think he's sort of done for me. Champ obviously comes here fresh, um, got a good record on it after a break. But I, I think even a peak champ is probably not going to be quite good enough to win this these days at the age of 11. This is a massive ask for Cider of Berlin to come and win this after that at Cheltenham. This is just a huge, huge, huge ask. When he won it last year, obviously, he was eased off after being pretty badly hampered in the in the Potemps final. So I would sort of err with caution with him, especially at 5-1 to one now. Um, home by the lead, I, I think will run off his feet in on a track like Aintree. I think um, I don't think it will suit uh, this sort of track. Tends to suit those sort of classy horses that can sort of come there sitting on swinging on the bridle a little bit. Um, but he, but he, I thought he ran pretty well considering that mistake that he made in running was yeah. enough again to excuse where he like the lengths that he lost maybe. Yeah, no, no, I, I agree. I do agree. I just, yeah, I, I, think he, I just think he can race very lazily, and I just think. On a sharper track like Aintree, I just I'm not sure he will entirely get away with it. Fair. Should we give Dash with Dash a mention? Because I, I can't I cannot believe he got demoted at Cheltenham. I'm glad he won it back in the appeal. But what a piss take for people that are about forecasts and stuff. Absolute scumbags. Yeah, it's not right, is it? It's... There's no way, no way he should have been demoted. That shouldn't go to appeal. This is where 
racing needs to get itself in the 21st century and have an online app where you just vote. Let the punters decide. I, I'm not even joking. <laughs> I love not, it. I'm, I'm I love it. Joking. I'm not even joking, right? Even if people are the backs, like tear up in the without market or whatever, like, there's not that it ever would have been or whatever it was, there's not a single person out there that would have said that Dash or Drasher should go get demoted. Not a single person. No front of a panel of people and they're like yeah fuck him off i don't want someone to get the forecast how has he been beat, beat I mean, how has he been beaten three lengths by gold tweet and then gone and finished second in the stairs i had all the back of that man always like it though isn't he just dogged isn't he proper 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 all stash with rasher isn't yeah, it proper all i don't like time hill back over i, I didn't i think time hill was sort of losing interest a little bit really for me um, all right so selection in there get on with it yeah all right Oh, you've done it too up, haven't you? Right. Yeah. <laughs> the handicap <laughs> after this. Is there anything you want to mention in this, or should we just crack on with the national? I haven't even looked at this, but this looks like a good race, doesn't it? Same. Well, I haven't looked at either, so let's leave yeah. that alone. Grand National. Stuck into that, the it? winner, because I've I've got a few bets that I've got into, <coughs> which reel out now for the fans if we want to do it that way. Yeah, you go. What we have? How many we have in each? As many as you like, but there's only one winner of this race. That is true. That is true. Call and up Rambler's a terrible favourite, though. You know how much I love a story and the romance behind it, but this one can also be backed up with form, which is good. Do you want to know who I think? like I've backed one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I've backed. I've got £93.75 on the race. I'm going to have another £6.25 or something to get it up to a tonne. Do you, want to know, do you want to know the one that wins? I want I want you to go through all, quickly, a couple of lines on each one you've backed, then why? Oh, I mean, I have actually done every single horse at Cheltenham there, but um, let, me, let me just grab... <laughs> sorry. I'm grabbing the bit for um, the horse that I've done because it's in the first day to Z part one. Bear with. Okay. Like sort of talk amongst yourselves. Yeah, I think I think Korak Rambler's a bit of a windy favourite here at six to one. I must admit. Um, look, I know he he's run back to back ultimates, which is a remarkable achievement to do that. He's obviously ten pounds well in, but you have got to remember that this horse is ten pounds well in over conventional fences, not over national fences, and not over four miles. So it's kind he, of irrelevant a little bit that he's he, ten pound well in. Mate, I know. I, I I do I do get it. I know it's different discipline, but he jump out of a plane. He would jump anything. He's yeah, like, he, he might he might well do he might well do, but the the slight concern for me is when he hits the front at Aintree. Uh, oh yeah, he's going to Cheltenham. He idled, didn't he? Yeah, and he did, yeah, yeah, and he's got a, like a four hundred and sixty five yard running from the back of the last to the well. Last. On on the line that I've said there is what I've said. Can I idle in a finish? And the long run from the back of the last would be where I could envision him maybe finding something too good. Done, completed it. Yeah. Lifetime ambition. I'll run through this. Has bits of chase form that ties in with like a few horses in here that have got a bit of a chance, I think. I think he's an like he's not an absolute confirmed stayer in respect of like a grand national test, but he's run a few times at three miles. He's had a win and he's had two seconds. I think he's got a real chance, like if the trip's what he's been crying out for, and I think it is. It is a small leap of faith given that when he ran back here in November, he was a beaten favourite. But if you remember that race. I think, was it Sean O'Keefe that rode him? I don't know what the horse was, but there was a horse that jumped out to the right the whole time and Sean O'Keefe comes to put the horse in with a chance and just stands next to the horse that's jumping out. Like, almost got carried out a few times. I that I felt that was like an experience thing. I wouldn't worry the fact that he got beaten there. Jessie Harrington as well, isn't it? She wants to win a national. I think Lifetime Ambition wins the national, mate. I don't think he'll stay. <laughs> Anywho, of the other ones, I'll tell you the ones that I've batted and I can't even bother yeah. to give up. I've had a little bit on Mr. Incredible. I don't think he's going to stay. I've had a little bit on the big breakaway because I did a friends piece and he ticks a few boxes. And I think he's a bit of a forgotten horse now. Everyone thought he was going to be good. He's just taking time to get there. He's been in natural form, isn't he? Yeah. Gabby Ross, a chance to. I don't even know if Carefully Selected is actually going to run it, but I love Carefully Selected. And I think you can forgive that National Hunt chase where he was dog shit because he was off after that. Um, Roy Madge. I have a couple of good on that. Can't remember why. Enjoy Delan. I mentioned that to you. Aaron mentioned about that horse as well. Like I gave him a teeny tiny weeny bit of a squeak. And Fortescue, I've had a couple of quid on. Who have you backed, or who are you going to back? Um, well, I tell you, one of the horses I was going to back was um, was Geoffrey, who's just finished second in the Irish National, <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't back him at twenty eight to one for that either. Um, I am going to back. I like uh, Vanillier. 
for Gavin Cromwell. Um, I think this horse is getting his act together over fences now. I thought it was a cracking run and in the Bobby Joe behind Kenboy, tempting to give him eight pounds. Um, that puts him, in my opinion, a well handicapped horse off one four seven. And I think there's more to come from him. I think he comes good in spring. And I think he stays forever. So I think he's a fair price. Uh, I like um who else do I? I thought Durasso might have a squeak. He's interesting. This horse has been plotting around in different types of races, ch- uh, chases, hurdles, different distances, but he does stay forever, and I think he he could go just, well. Just what? on that, yeah, around in different types of races, which I do agree. With. He's just been he's just disappointed in every discipline. Yeah, yeah he has. But if you go back to his run, um, I know, I know. Kerry but- National. Yeah, we're back in 2004. If you go back to that form back in 2014, where once he travelled all right for a few fences, I, oh, I, I hate him. Like, no, to be fair, you look at his record over three miles. Retire him. No, he, I'm telling you, look at his record over three miles. He's got a good, good shout. Uh, Dunboyne is one for, for Gordon Elliott. I like um, a lot of his career has come on soft ground. I'm not entirely convinced that he needs like a, a bog or anything like that, but I think he just wants a trip. I think he'll travel and jump and Love these national fences. It's not a massively strong case you can make for him, but there's definitely something about this horse that suggests he's got a good, uh, good bit of ability in there. So, Dun Boyne. Oh, here we go. Fury Road. I would have backed Fury Road for the Mars Chase. That's how, that's how bad of a case I'm going to make for Fury Road. I would have backed him for the Mars Chase. Right? But he's been pulled out of that, and I think he's going to come in here. One six one's a huge rating, but I just can't get that run behind the Hoy Senor out of my head from last year. Mm. Um, I thought it, I thought he was just galloping you know, on at the line. Yeah. And you're bored of this already. <laughs> you know no, 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 I agree with you. You know, he did look good in that last year. I, I, I don't have him like really recently, but it's like it's that, it's that, it's that, it, that one run lingers in your mind in it as, oh, he could be a national horse, couldn't he? Yeah. I know. And um, again, he's another horse. One six one's a ridiculous mark, really, to be making a case of. I'm just trying to speak right. thoughts as we're doing this. But the, look, the main play is going to be Vanilla. Yeah. I, I haven't got to back Mr. Incredible as well because I love that horse. Get on Lifetime Ambition. It's going to shit him. No, don't like him. Do you like Gail? Oh, the minute. The, the Miz Nil. Uh, yeah, I, I, can, like, I can see a case be made for him, but not at the price it is. It's the same as Karach. Like You can see a case. Oh. See a case for Dirt Work. There's lots of horses you can see those bits, but Tay would just... have a good chance if it weren't for that rating by his name that annoys me. It's Capadano. Yeah, but that's the thing that like, there's, there's that they, like it is it's a, like it's a good race the national when there's a lot of their chances. There's obviously there's been years in the past when there's been a horse that's lobbed in. You've had like the Tiger Rolls, but we've had other ones in the past, haven't we? Like what was the um, was it Cloudy Glen that was like a stone well in and there was just nowhere it's like needed good ground or whatever it was. Maybe it was Cloudy Glen. It was Cloth Cap, wasn't it? Like, one, yeah, but I, I mean, you sometimes get those things. You? I, I feel this is a like a nice, tasty, classic Grand National where pick a name, pick a number, pick a colour, just have a couple of bets on, innit? Get a few I in. I think there's maybe. a lot in here that have no chance at all, though. Oh, yeah, I've got a few of them. I I've don't got... want to start naming them because oh. just in case one of them wins. <laughs> no, do it. I've got I got a load of one starers in here. So the right, one... like, Kate Cloud... Kingman has no I'm, chance. I'm going to go, I'll go for him in like race card number of the ones. Yeah. You're going to love this as well. Fury Road, no chance. Right. He's a one star. Um, Durasso's a one star. Honestly, this is not even me making up. Durasso's a one star. Escaria 10. Yeah, no chance. Kate Gentleman is a no, like, he's a, not, not even a one star. He's a no star. He's a no star. I agree with that. Dior Kerr, a wave of the sea. Oh, Dior Kerr. What? Why is Dior Kerr? I forgot to mention him. Why is he a no star? Because he's got some form at three miles, but any runs in excess of that aren't encouraging. So he's not going to win. He would be, be bollocks. Um, Vanilli has only a two stars, just FYI. Oh, really? That's the one. Because he's a hype horse. He was 11 to 4 for a National Hunts chase after he ran through the fences every single time. And it's the same now. It's like, there's just something telling me this horse will win. <laughs> I no, I, 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 you know what I'm like. I'm a romantic for all sorts. I'm going to bat Momro over hurdles for fuck's sake. But Vanilli is the horse that I haven't had that affiliation with because we got him at Cheltenham and the Albert Barton, mate. We got in and out, but you're not out. You're still in there. Yeah. Anyway, of the other ones, Cloudy Glen's a death one at one star. <clears throat> what about our power? Surely he does not stay. Re- well, yeah, we're getting to that. So recite a prayer is a one star. Our power, 
He's a three star. Yeah. Fairly, no, he's not. Fairly unexposed as a stay and chaser, especially so in this kind of test. And on the up, technically six pound well in, so would be one of the less surprising. Oh. Even if his form wouldn't scream out, he's going to win a national. He, like, he would. He it's not beyond the realms of possibility that he's got a chance. Jesus, Frankie de Burle is a one star. Yeah, he's he's a good horse in his, in his, on his day though, isn't he? And then like Deffy Blue, Jeffrey Punt, of Milan native, all around the national. They're not going to run. Born by the Seas a one star. Fakir is a one star. Mortals a one star. Darren's hopes a one star. Fantasticas is a one star. He's not going to get anything. Fantasticas would be a national horse if he was good enough. But he's not good enough, is he? It's like the same way, aren't he? Would be my uncle. She had a pair of bollocks. Like... No, 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 but I, no, but I just mean like if, if Fantasticas had the ability to be like like he wants he wants to run over four miles two over these types of fences, but he's not good enough to get into the race. Right. Okay. That's all I meant by it. Talking I'm sure about... people still tip him up for the ultimate. <laughs> <laughs> Anti face for the ultimate. What'd you right. make a me like? Hang on. What'd you make a me loss? Uh, yeah, I'm annoyed because I think like his um, Hennessy win was one again one of those that I look back after and think I probably should have paid a little bit more attention to him. I um I don't I can't have him is the long and the short of it. Yeah, I he's a to stay. He's a two star. I just don't think he's got like he is in the form. He's like I don't think he's got much more to come. And in that race, was it Fiddler on the roof that was chasing him down? There's yeah. horses. I've run over against Fiddler on the Roof at the same sort of distance, and they've gone away from Fiddler at the Roof at the end of the race. So the fact that Fiddler on the Roof was getting to him just makes me think, get fucked. What do you think of Noble Yates? Oh, I can't remember what I wrote on him. It's just, like, it's just he's like way too high, isn't he? It's just everything he wants. I mean, I know he won the race last year, but everything about this season just says he wants a mammoth trip and yeah, back at Aintree. The thing is that 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 um, race at Aintree, the many clouds chase, where I was poo pooing the way that he got thrown in, like didn't want to buy into it, goes and gets beaten in the Cotswold chase stuff. Like it was like from a betting perspective on his form after, I didn't want to buy into it. But like now, when it comes into a national, you look at what he's done and the horses that are in there. Even like Dashwood Drasher coming second in the stairs hurdle, like that race does read well. Doesn't doesn't mean he was going to be fancy for the other races that he ran in after, but it does mean he's got a chance in a national. Right, that doorbell's just gone. The boys home. Do we want to mention something in the bumper? Nope. All right. I mean, that's that's going to be a wrap. I'm going to stick an advert in now in case anyone stayed long this time. I pre <laughs> appreciate your time, mate. We'll catch up over the next couple of days anyway. Yeah. Best of luck tomorrow. Speak to you soon. All right, mate. Cheers, boy. Da da bud. Bye.